Excuse me, ladies. I'm sorry. I hope everybody's having a really, 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 really good lunch. Are you? Good. So I'd like to get your attention if I can, because you know what I said about time. I tried to stay on top of things. As your program indicated, we would have a guest speaker for lunch. First, let me extend apologies from Mayor Muriel Bowser for being unable to join us today. She had a conflict in her schedule, and we truly do understand. However, we are gracious with the, excuse me, We are, however, gracious with the presence of someone that I have found to be a dear friend, someone whose passion is in competition with mine, someone who has a history of not only living in the District of Columbia and going to school in the District of Columbia, but whose parents migrated from Haiti to the United States, someone who has had the opportunity to work in some of the top corporate law firms in this country, someone who has made a lot of money but decided that it wasn't money that was driving him at this point in his life. It was his desire to get back to the people, his desire to put his feet into the world that needed some of the experience and talents that he had gained. In January of 2015, Carl Racine was elected the first elected Attorney General in the District of Columbia. <laughs> Thus began a new era for the D.C. Office of the Attorney General, one of independence, accountability, and passionate for public interest advocacy. His priorities reflect the clear vision he brings to his job, safeguarding the public integrity, reforming juvenile justice systems, protecting the consumer rights and interests of district's most vulnerable residents, and last, but certainly not least, promoting the quality and affordability of rental housing all across the district. Can I ask you to lower your voice, please, ladies? At table, Ward 7, can you please lower your voice? Thank you. These priorities are reflected in the OAG's reorganization to include a public advocacy division, an Office of Consumer Protection, and a housing and community justice system. So to put it another way, we have an attorney general whose priorities include everyone in this room. I could not be more pleased for the close working relationship that is being established between the OAG and the Office of the Tenant Advocate. We have forged this relationship over the last 18 months. I have every confidence that our relationship will continue to grow and that tenants and communities all across the district will benefit as a result. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Attorney General Carl Racine. Jahan, I was wondering whether my mother's letter to you was received. Um, but it seems as though the package was delivered. Uh, and you, boy, you delivered her thoughts uh, brilliantly. Look, I'm overwhelmed uh, with your kind words uh, and graciousness. And certainly, uh, you know, confirm that the Office of Attorney General, um, as it continues to grow and develop and mature, 
um, absolutely looks forward to continuing to work uh, with our partners uh, in government who are the substantive effort, uh, experts uh, in this uh, area. Uh, oftentimes there is uh, an instinct, even you know, at the Office of Attorney General, sometimes to want to get into something uh, because it just doesn't seem right. There's something wrong. People are being taken advantage of. Um, and sometimes there's an inclination to get into things perhaps before we understand the issues fully. Um, I can tell you that when it comes to OTA, we know who the expert is. She's made it clear to us. <laughs> and, uh, and, we, we, uh, and we fundamentally um, you know, respect her. So I want to thank uh, Johanna for inviting me to join you and for the important work that she and all of OTA's staff do every day on behalf of the district's most vulnerable citizens. It's a pretty extraordinary um, and festive room today. And I must say, you know, you've got a beautiful, spectacular day outside. There are festivals going on. And yet, the tables are full of people focused on housing and tenants' rights. And you've been able to attract several council members here. I want to make sure that I don't miss anyone. If I do, I apologize. But I saw uh, Brandon Todd earlier. Um, I, you know, Robert White, at large council member. Um, Alyssa Silverman, who's uh, just an, an extraordinary uh, at large council member whose office we work with every day. Uh, council member Shea, a stalwart for consumer um, protection, et cetera, Shea. Um, and I, I saw Sandra uh, Matavu Fry here from the People's Council. Sometimes people get the OAG confused with other offices. Whenever they get us confused with People's Council, I must say I don't even want to correct them because the People's Council is known as a strong, independent office uh, that fundamentally is about the right thing. Mm -mm. Um, let me lastly take a moment to recognize today's honorees who work tirelessly to level the playing field and ensure the district's tenants are protected. Uh, Jim McGrath has been in the business for a long time. We appreciate his work. Uh, also a nod, of course, to the late uh, council member Jim Graham, uh, who's whose work endures, and I know uh, some members of, uh, some young members of Jim Graham's staff are here, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and also this year's uh, Community Award winners. Mm. Uh, thanks to all of you who've come out today. I'm going to try to abbreviate my remarks, but give me about seven minutes or so. When it comes to affordable housing in the District of Columbia, we all have a sense of the statistics, but let me just rattle off a couple of statistics. Let me note my friend and former colleague, Commissioner Stephen Taylor from Disby um, is here also. Um, good to see you, Stephen. So we know the stats. DC is the second least affordable state or territory in the United States. And according to data, the 10th most expensive US city overall. Rents have been rising across the city and the median rent for a one-bedroom apartment is approximately $2,000 a month. 18% of our residents live below the poverty line. What does that mean? Obviously, that means that $2,000 a month average rent uh, is not something that an extraordinary number of our residents can actually meet. Indeed. 26,000 D.C. households spend more than half their income on rent. When you spend more than half your income on rent, you're extraordinarily vulnerable, literally, the next month to finding yourself not in that location anymore. These numbers paint a stark picture. Like each of you, I and my colleagues, uh, who are uh, here today, including uh, Jimmy Rock um, and Marissa Geller, are focused on trying to understand how the Office of Attorney General can 
um, really be an assist in the area of affordable housing. And so we thought long and hard about that. I'm happy to give you some information um, about a new division that was mentioned earlier that we've started uh, at the Office of Attorney General called our Public Advocacy Division. So the Office of Attorney General prior to uh, you know, 2015 mo spent most of its time, energy, and resource defending district agencies. And it spent less of its time, energy, and resources being a public advocate in the public interest for DC residents. This public advocacy division has been established to do exclusively that. Focus on DC residents using the law as a tool to help out our most vulnerable residents. In the public advocacy division, we have a section called the Housing and Economic Justice Section. That section is extremely well led uh, by my new colleague, uh, Jane Lewis, who is a recognized um, you know, expert and fighter uh, in the housing space, coming down from Baltimore where she did extraordinary work and has been leading our team's efforts now for several months. You're gonna start seeing more activity from Jane's uh, section because we're getting more resources, thank you to the council members uh, from the council to allow us uh, to do uh, you know, the kind of active work that, uh, that we seek uh, to do. So it's all about the strategic coordination uh, with the uh, agencies and the grassroots organizations that are out there and the pro bono law firms that are out there uh, helping vulnerable residents. And so our priority, because the truth is, the Office of Attorney General cannot be the landlord and tenant lawyer for all tenants. In order for us to be effective, therefore, we have to prioritize where we can have the most impact. And that's where the coordination with the various offices, especially OTA, is so important. The way that we've prioritized our office now in the housing area is what I expect that we'll continue to do uh, under Jane's leadership. And that is where we see a pattern in practice where landlords and developers are seeking to take advantage of tenants for the purpose of lining their pockets today and tomorrow, we will be absolutely <laughs> willing, able, and ready to file suit. So we're gonna use the toolbox of lawsuits uh, to bring actions. We've already done that, as you may know, in a couple of cases, the Congress Heights, uh, Terrace Manor, and I can tell you, sadly, uh, that we're actively uh, investigating other properties uh, where I expect that we'll be bringing actions. The second area that we'll use, as a, uh, uh, we'll use our tools is in the area of legislation. And I'm really, really happy the council member Che made clear that she is very concerned about a practice that's been going on for a little while in the district where too many landlords are taking advantage of so-called concession rental offers. Let me tell you what that's about if you don't know what that's about. You may go and rent a new apartment and the landlord will tell you, hey look, the monthly rent is, call it 1500 a month. For those tenants that may be affordable at that time, they'll say, I'll take it. What the landlord hasn't advised the tenant is that in the landlord's mind, the real rate can be $2,500 or $3,000. Usually the landlord springs that news on the tenant when that year, that annual lease is about to expire and it's time to increase the rent. You would think, a tenant would think that the rent is gonna increase naturally at a reasonable market rate, at what level? 1,500. 
right? Too many landlords are proposing that the next rate be increased 3%, not above that 1500 level, but about that higher unstated level. And I know that legislatively, um, the council is working hard on that, um, and I can't talk about ongoing investigations other than to say that our office is intimately uh, involved um, in a couple of matters um, related to that problem. So yet another way that the Office of Attorney General uh, can work uh, with the community. Lastly, what I want to say is that later this afternoon, I, Jimmy, I think it's 1.30, um, Jimmy Rock, who is an exceptional lawyer in our office, uh, is leading a workshop where he gets a chance to really share with the public what the office considers uh, in regards to whether and when to use our still somewhat limited resources to come on in and bring a suit. I think that understanding Jimmy and Jane's presentation um, is going to further allow you to understand how it is we can partner. With this, uh, I know this is a festive crew, um, and so I'm going to end my chat uh, right now. And once again, thank you very much for your warm reception. Since we're not in a government building, I'm going to say something political just for a moment. And that is that it was my privilege to run for attorney general. It was my honor uh, to have been elected um, as attorney general. And it's with tremendous um, you know, joy uh, and enthusiasm that I have stated my intention to run again for the Office of Attorney General. And I very much appreciate uh, every single person's here uh, support because just like OTA, you know if you're an independent office, the only way you remain independent is if you fight for it. Right? And with your help, we've been able to establish the Office of Attorney General as a truly independent office modeled uh, after how OTA does its job with competence, uh, with passion, and with integrity. Thank you very much. now how are you good to see you uh, did everybody finish lunch have you eaten that dessert uh, you know in the old old days the, the saying was after you eat sometimes you get sleepy but I'm betting that most of you who have come today came for another reason and so I'm going to encourage you to participate in all of the workshops that will be commencing at 1.30, and they will start promptly. If you are a real estate agent and signed up for Renters' Rights 101, I want to remind you that when you uh, go to that particular workshop today, please make sure you sign in, because we need that based upon uh, the requirements. Uh, all real estate uh, agents who participate today will be entitled to three uh, certified educational units at the end of part two of the course. And we will be looking for evaluations from everybody in the room to tell us whether we've done a good job, a bad job, and what we can improve, and what you would like to see next year. Carl, I want to thank you again for your remarks. Uh, I want to also take this time to thank Alyssa Silverman, Councilmember Silverman, for joining us, Council Member White, Council Member Che, who? And yes, Council Member Todd. I think he left, but he was here, and I was very happy that he had time to stop by. And to all of you, again, as I said this morning, without you, we would not be here. And we wish to thank you at the bottom of our heart for being the reason for us being here 
and for continuing to let us know what we need to do to improve the government services. So have a good learning afternoon. And again, thank you again so very, very much. Thank you.